We have an agenda that we can either share briefly just to preview it, or we can have it shared the whole time. Is it okay if I share my screen for a second just to do that? Yeah, let me make you a co-host. Okay, you should be good to go. Thank you. Awesome. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Great. Great. Um, well, um, is it possible to uh, put a link to that in the chat and let let us? Uh, I I don't need editing privileges or anything. Sure. Um, while B is doing that, um, I will have a brief introduction and kind of give the lay of the land a little bit. Uh, my name is Tyson Newkirk, and um, I'll be facilitating today, part of the Waitley team here at Conway School, um, and. We're so excited to uh, have the opportunity to work with you on this climate resilience plan. And um, the purpose of this meeting really is for us to get to know you in the project and um, get a better sense in your own words about what uh, you guys have been working on and what you're thinking and how we can be most helpful um, to furthering that work. Um, and even in a more specific way, using this um, first meeting as a time to give us the information that we need to have a really clear and concise memory of understanding that we can use as the basis for our project uh, making sure that we're really um, working to deliver what's most meaningful to the town of Waitley. Um, so we'd love to start off with um, some brief introductions, just going around and saying um, your name uh, and your relationship to uh, the project. And maybe if you're from Waitley, you're one of your favorite things about the town of Waitley or from slash work there. <laughs> um, Hannah, do you, you mind starting? Yeah, no problem. Um, my name is Hannah Davis. Oh, my computer has been having some issues with the video, so I'm going to shut it down for now and try again later. Um, I am the Community Development Administrator and Assistant Town Administrator for Waitley. Uh, today is my last day working for Waitley, unfortunately. I'm very sad about it. I agree, Joyce. <laughs> um, but it's been a really wonderful place to work for, and the people here are so dedicated to climate resilience and um, finding solutions to those problems in town. And I really appreciate about that, about them. Um, shall I popcorn to Joyce? Great, thank you. Okay, all right, I'm not muted. Okay, good. Uh, I'm Joyce, I'm a member of the select board. This is my 12th year altogether being on the select board. I can't believe that. <laughs> oh. um, I uh, By day, I teach physics at Smith College. Um, let's see, favorite thing? about Waitley is it's just a nice, peaceful, quiet place to live. Mm. Great, thank you. Um, Julie, do you wanna go? Sure, um, my name is Julie Wagoner. I live in Waitley. I am a graphic designer um, and I am also on the select board with Joyce. I'm the second of three of us and it's my first year on the select board. So I'm learning a lot and I love all of the open space and woodland in Waitley, and I take advantage of a great deal of it. Thank you. Um, Brian, do you mind going? Hi, I'm Brian. I'm the town administrator in Waitley. I have been in Waitley six plus years. Um, it is really a, a really great place to work, and I'm not saying that because two of my bosses are on this call. <laughs> um, uh, things that I like best are definitely the landscapes and the sunsets. Um, where I live, it's forested. So um, with with all the active agriculture that's still happening, the fields are open and it's, it's just great. Awesome. Thank you. You want to go, B? Oh, muted. Just like such a goober. Um, hi, my name is B, and I am a student at the Conway School. I grew up in the suburbs outside of Boston, um, lived in Seattle for the last eight years, but I'm so excited to be back and um, living in this part of the state. No. Hi, everyone. I'm Smo. Um, I am a student at the Conway School, and I'm really excited to be working on this project. Um, this type of planning is really, really something I find to be deeply important. And I'm excited to start working on these types of projects with you guys. Uh, thanks, Ma. Uh, my name is Tyson Newkirk. And uh, also, 
Um, really um, jazzed to be doing this work together with you all. I'm uh, a farmer and a forestry worker. I run my own farm in Peter Sam, Mass, where I live with my family. And uh, transitioning into uh, kind of planning and design work is a neat opportunity for me to take some of those skill sets and apply them. And love Waitley and very envious of its beautiful agricultural soils as someone who farms with the rocks uh, of uh, central Massachusetts. So, um, so. Um, we would love to, we have some times associated with our agenda. Um, the first thing we would love to do, you know, we've been spending the last couple, we've uh, been spending like the last week going over a lot of the background information, Hannah, that you so nicely have uh, forwarded us, um, diving deep into the open space and recreation plans and the MVP plans um, and the hazard uh, mitigation plans and all those things, just to kind of get a context of uh, where things are at and the work that you all have done. Um, but, um, We'd love to start out with a little bit of, in your words, um, like, how did the project come about? Like, how did we get to this point where you guys are like, yeah, let's move. The next step is to work with the Conway School um, to have them work on a climate resilience plan. Um, and kind of what is the key, what are the core needs there? I know that's a little bit of a broad question, but if anybody wants to take a stab at it. Paul Newland. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's blame Paul. Sure, sure. Yeah. Paul Newland was like, this is a great opportunity. Why don't we do it? Yeah. So um, I can kind of hop in if you'd like yeah. me to hop in here. So yeah. uh, Waitley was really fortunate to make a connection with someone at the uh, Conway School who mentioned that the students do planning like this. Um, and we were really excited about the project because uh, I think my hope especially was that this sort of planning would kind of fill in the gaps of climate resilience that um, state funded programs tend to leave. Um, I was really excited about the social implications of climate resilience, for example. Um, and yeah, I think we were really excited to create a partnership with the Conway School. Yeah. And anybody else have a perspective to add on that or? A, um... Yeah. I had participated in some other uh, municipal vulnerability planning process, and I just sort of felt like it was kind of there. I mean, we, we didn't really have a chance to think about like all kinds of ways that we need to be resilient. Um, and we, like, we, I feel like we had the same meeting three times where people said, hey, y'all need culverts. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but that was because that was like the main thing that's sort of within the town's sure. scope of regular business. We take right. care of our own roads, yeah. but we don't get to take care of our own electricity grid, at least right. not really. Uh, yeah. We don't get to take care of, you know, there's a lot of like housing. We can hardly manage to do any low income or or even affordable housing, which we know is not the same as low income housing. Um, I teach a course on climate change. At Smith, in fact, I just finished it up, and um, one of the big messages the students get from that course, and it won't be news to you, is that people with resources are going to be okay with climate change to a certain extent. People without resources are going to get screwed. So whatever, I mean, I, I sort of see our um, climate resilience is not just, I mean, we, we, we do need culverts, right? But um, we have to be able to think more broadly than culverts and the people we were working with on planning that just really weren't, uh, you know, thinking big picture and uh, thinking uh, kind of broadly about what we can do to to make our community resilient. So that's that's kind of one perspective when this came up, I thought, yeah, I want to be a part of this because I think it can be bigger and broader and better than um than what we did with through the, this other process. Great. Uh, Brian or Julie, either of you guys have anything you feel adds to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Other than I want to audit Joyce's class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I'm coming up with a subtitle for our report, you know, climate resilience beyond culverts, I think is what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, beyond beyond uh, Incredible. <laughs> in, a, uh, <laughs> yes, in addition to uh, culverts, yes. Um, so uh, thanks for sharing that. That's really helpful. It's always, you know, we see 
um, the documents that you guys have been sending back and forth with uh, our project team administratively, but it's also really nice to always just hear it from people's, you know, in people's own words, because um, it adds a, a special uh, context to the situation. So thank you for that. Um, the next thing we'd like to talk about is um, just review some of the project goals um, and focus areas for our work, because climate resilience is such a broad um, topic. Um, and um, we have a really, you guys presented a really nice list uh, of questions for us to investigate um, in um, the initial proposal. Um, but uh, we'd love to just kind of d d dive into those a little bit. Um, and really also be so thankful for all the amazing work you and your partners have done to there's so much great background work. Um, so for part of this for us is really to feel like how can we make the work that we do feel like it's generative and meaningful and not just um, uh, kind of a summary of all the other analyses that have been done and suggestions for lots of culverts, right? So, um, so um, curious a little bit to know about um, how the questions that were generated that we got um, or how the, the list of questions that we got was generated, like where those came from and who was a part of that process. Um, yeah, I can speak to that. Um, so I did some work with CJ Lammers, uh, one of the employees of the Conway School, to come up with some potential research questions. And she was kind enough to provide several um, that might help direct our thinking. Um, after our initial meeting with just the Climate Resilience Planning Committee in Whaley, we kind of narrowed that list down to the four questions that I sent you guys um, and that are on the minutes uh, for our previous meeting. Um, and actually, I did reword the last one about soil just a little bit. So I'm going to copy paste that into our chat right now. Oops, sorry, I just closed it. <laughs> um, so instead of just being about soil sequestration, it's more about um, yeah. how we can kind of incorporate soil sequestration into stewardship of soil and ecological stewardship as a whole. Great. Um, um, quick question. I would love to hear a little bit more about the like the Climate Planning Resilience Committee um, and who's on that and how long that's been going for and kind of what that structure is like and how it's led into this work would be helpful to know. Yeah. So um, with the way that municipal government works, especially the way that we have it structured now, a really great way to get community engagement is to form these communities or um, excuse me, these committees that consist of community members. So um, this Climate Resilience Planning Committee was formed for the specific purpose of uh, engaging with the Conway School and creating this climate resilience planning effort. Um, and we have only had one meeting prior where we kind of narrowed down that initial question list. Yeah, that was kind of our understanding, but I just wanted to make sure before going forward that, um, so great. Um, we do have an ongoing energy committee, but it's not quite the same thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know I was very impressed with the number of committees that Waitley has for a town of its size. Um, nice, nice job, team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, kind of given those core questions that you've come with, come up with, um, and it's great to know that that kind of came from y'all's internal work. So it's a little bit more direct. Sometimes they come from like a broader context or just kind of cut and paste into a thing. So it's nice to know that it's coming from you guys. Um, is there a sense of, do you have any sense of, prioritization isn't the, necessarily the right word, but um, are there any of those that feel more pressing or feel like they deserve a greater like depth of inquiry um, to you guys? Um, and I, that might be an individual thing or it might be something that you guys feel collectively um, there's a greater priority. Um, I think that um, the- Just as a reminder for everybody, I just, um, put the questions into the yeah. chat. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, the, that's the same as that Word document you sent us this morning, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's why I'm looking over here, because that's where my Word document is. Totally. Oh. Because um, I think that's helpful because the list that we have is um, 10 questions. So it's also we also do have the four question one. It's where all those extra resources links were. Yeah. Um, so, okay. yeah, Hannah so nicely gave us a really great um, kind of resource uh, by question um, document that we're diving into. Um, but um, as folks look at those, I'm just wondering, again, if there's anything um, like 
specific or that we want to articulate more um, in those um, that feel like more directly applicable to Waitley, like how can green energy solutions, for example, is a really great question, but sometimes it means like there's active people thinking about micro hydro or solar fields or this, that, or the other thing. Mm -hmm. So um, if there's any level of specificity um, that you guys would like to add to that now, um, that would be helpful. And if not, that's fine too. Um, just want to make sure that we can make our work as focused and meaningful as, as possible. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe, I don't know if this is the kind of input you're looking for, but specifically on that one, we were thinking about our, you know, our farms as being a vital part of our community mm -hmm. and that farms are going to be stressed under climate change with the conditions changing. So there's, in a way, there's a little bit of farming in all of these, right? Um, but in the energy one, I think there are at least demonstrations of dual use mm -hmm. solar and farming of in the, the farm at Deerfield, yep. um, the UMass farm at Deerfield. Yep. And I don't know that people really know much about it or what are the lessons they've learned that would uh, well, that would generally apply. There are also people in town who think there's no such thing as dual use. Once you put a solar panel in the ground, you, you will never farm this land again. And I don't believe they're correct. I, but I think that's something where, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, real data would be um, helpful and real, uh, you know, practical ideas about how, um, you know, farmers who need, what do they need? They need power, they need water, they need soil, they need workers. So there's our four <laughs> top items um, right there. Um, I think a lot of people in town are very, um, concerned about watershed issues. You know, the town's history in the last, you know, 40-ish years has been that, um, the, you know, we came from having contaminated wells to having um, a, a very nice water system that serves, uh, well, all of the town that had the contaminated wells. That does not serve 100% of the town because part of the town did not have contaminated wells. But be that as it may, people are very sensitive to uh, water and water resources and that's a place where uh, the interests of the farmers and the interests of of the residents really um, resonate very much um, so those are those are two things that um, I, I, I kind of pull out um, that people other than farmers also have great concern for mm -hmm. um, Great, thank you, Senator. Uh, I'll, I'll shut up and let somebody else say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would second you on on both of those issues and um, on the idea that there are at least those two issues that are um, salient for both residents and for the farmers, for you know, folks working and farming here. Um, I would be really interested, Joyce, you just keep saying things that I'm like, I need to learn more about that. I need to find out more about that. Um, is there some kind of baseline of information that we as the Climate Resilience Committee could have? For instance, the UMass farm at Deerfield. Surprise to me. Oh, I would love to know what okay. they do. I would love to know what we already have in place. Um and what we're doing so that I can speak from and work with a more knowledgeable base. Yeah. Yeah. I can send you a link about the farm in Deerfield. I, I find they have a website so you can see that they're doing things and they, cool. um, but uh, maybe I don't need to explain it in this meeting. I can send you the link, but I sort of feel like I, I can't find the, Hey, lessons learned and every farmer would benefit from. Right. I don't know, there's there's right. not a bulleted list of, of things there so it might right. be a little more subtle that's often the case too may, they may not know yet what would be good for in general for most board. Yeah, yeah but um i just made a note to send info about the deerfield farm that to, would be awesome to, and i would love to you know continue to be educated by i would say hannah but she's leaving um <laughs> <laughs> Brian and other folks who are in the town and have been working with the town longer about what we've already got in place and what are we building on and what can we gather information mm -hmm. from because um, all of that's new and exciting to me right now. 
Julie, I'll send you the information I sent to the Conway students too, because I have a lot of um, planning that the town has done in the past compiled there, as well as some interesting links that I think might yeah. be useful. Thank yeah, you. I mean, appreciate that. Hit, use the two button on that, Hannah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, Brian or Hannah, do you have anything um, front of mind right now that you'd like to add to those questions or like specificity or um, clarity on any of the questions? That's a great question. I think um, I would defer first and foremost to the folks who are uh, gonna be here after I leave. Um, <laughs> but but can you yeah. more about the housing one? Because I, I sort of feel like you had um, you you said a lot of things that everybody agreed with at that meeting, and I I'm not sure I would be able to put that into words as well as you did. Uh, me about the housing? Yeah, about like because you were talking about social issues and housing came up in that context. Yeah, so I think what I was initially really interested in was the possibility of exploring the social implications as it relates to migrant farm workers, um, and of course climate migration and. Um, housing are very intertwined in that um, area of study. Um, I don't know if that makes these uh, questions more specific for the Conway students, but um, that's kind of the direction that I was coming from while I was thinking about it. Yeah, and the town on the whole doesn't have, like, it, it, if houses start getting washed away along the major brooks, I live along the West Brook. What if the West Brook becomes the West Brook River? and all of our houses are gone away you know that i i don't know I, we don't know what's going to happen but there there aren't a lot of good housing options um Absolutely. And, and this is not that even in the absence of, of climate change it's, there's going to be there's housing's an issue which we talked with our representatives about just the other night at our select board meeting as well um yeah. but certainly if, it, if we're going to have if there's going to be lots of migration and there's going to be lots of migration people got to live someplace and it's better for all of us. Even if we have a house, it's better if everybody has a house. Definitely. And too, on the note of housing, we're, it's a cool time to be exploring housing in Waitley because we've got the housing production plan in process. We have this housing trust that we haven't used. Like if the, if your team wanted to explore going into housing more, I think that you would have a really robust project there just to kind of create a really strong plan with actionable recommendations about what to do next for housing in Waitley based on everything that we're working on right now. Okay, great. So what, what I'm hearing there, I just want to kind of reframe it to make sure I'm getting it correctly that, um, you know, in that first question around housing, um, there's both some concerns about kind of mitigation and adaptation for the existing housing stock in Waitley with respect to climate change. And then also concerns about future development um, of Waitley for um, um, for residences and how those could be um, planned in such a way that has climate change front of mind to ensure that future development is climate resilient. Is that fair? I think yeah. that would be fair. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, great. Thank you for that. Um, and then obviously, and specifically, you know, it kind of the generate the generate of it was, or the genesis of it was specifically kind of around farm worker and farm worker housing, but it's also a broader question. Is that feel uh, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Affordable housing. Affordable yeah. housing. Yes. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, so I probably should have asked this question first, but just a quick snapshot of um, if like, what is, what does resilience mean to like wait, like climate resilient Waitley, like what does that mean to you guys? If you guys have a, op do you guys have a like working definition that you use as a climate resilience group? Um, or do you have specific um, things that really come um, that feel important for you? Um, like an uh -huh. end, kind of like, yeah, like what we talk a lot about in, in, in our planning work is an end state. Like what's a, like a climate resilient Waitley would look like for example, uh, future development is planned in places that are not going to be negatively affected by uh, rising floodwaters because of climate change or, um, mm -hmm. you know. That is certainly one. Yeah. Um, you know, farmers are able to adapt with changing weather patterns to shift their crops and markets to ones that, you know, think if there's and you know, they can be more broad or, but sometimes people have like really specific, they're like, this is the thing that I'm thinking about. Um, if so, great. Please feel free to share it. If not, 
um, and you guys have a broader definition, that's great too. Mine probably comes more from just a very small residential uh, viewpoint at, at this point of, um, you know, if we lose power, how do we how do we keep the house going? Is it possible to get off fossil fuels as much as possible? Um, how can residents or businesses stop using as many fossil fuels and uh, switch to more solar or um, geothermal or whatever? Um, that was one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I had yeah, another yeah, question. And, and, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of, I mean, resilience in the big picture is yeah, I, you, my, things my, change, but not everything breaks. Yeah. Right? Yes. And, it, and you know, certain things that break cause big problems. Other things that break cause little problems. Right. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things are going to break that will cause big problems? And what can we do to mitigate the small problems? So when it's, yeah. I think it's inevitable that there'll be more power outages and stress on our energy system, electrical system, especially. So what can we do so that, you know, our farmers can still keep making food mm -hmm. so that people can still go to work. People can still get their medicines. People can still, uh, you know, take care of the most important things in their life. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, Brian or Hannah, any like specific things that come that feel really salient to, to either of you? Yeah, Brian, thanks. Um, I just wanted to, and it's actually, it, it, it's the opposite problem of, of flooding and that's drought. Yeah. Um, it, it feels like probably four out of the six years I've been here, we've had summers with some sort of water conservation restriction. Um, and although it, it seems like water is abundant and we've never been we've never been short um we've definitely had restrictions um in terms of the in terms of the town system right um and we it, it just seems like we have as a town especially with the agricultural operations and even yankee candle and some of the some of the manufacturers it just seems like we have such a significant demand on water um that that doesn't exist in other communities and I always think about what would happen if if it wasn't available for everybody in terms of how it would be prioritized. And that's sort of an operational decision for the mm -hmm. for the water department. But um, you know, everybody's drawing from the same aquifer essentially or or pretty close to the same one. Mm -hmm. I think some have withdrawal permits from the Connecticut. Um, but if if those are all strained or those aren't available, I I, I don't know what would happen and I don't know how, you know, it would, usage would be prioritized. Yeah, and are there things Important. we can do that to plan for that, I guess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point, Brian. Yeah, thank you for that. That level of specificity is super helpful and it's very, yeah, it's very real. As a farmer myself, yeah, the drought periods are as challenging in some ways as the, as the flooding periods, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and that there's more than one source. The town water is not the source for most of the agriculture, from what I understand. And there's the upper aquifer and the lower aquifer um, and the Connecticut River. And only the lower aquifer is on the town. That's where the town pumps from. The upper aquifer is where many of the farms pump from. And then the Connecticut, and then I might be missing some. We could ask a farmer. <laughs> And this, um, is, this is sort of an anecdotal, but um, not only people using the water, but um, wildlife and how that affects, how that in turn affects human consumption. I think I heard this yeah. past summer that some of the fruit crops were destroyed by animals looking for a source of water, like squirrels were eating all the apples because they were thirsty and some yeah. Eight all mine. Yep. Yeah, had a smaller apple crop because of it, which then influences their income and people's ability to eat apples and all that good stuff. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh. And I guess you I don't know how it enters the water conversation, but um 
at least the brook at my house is connected to the Northampton Reservoir. It's, 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 it's headwaters are whatever the Northampton Reservoir doesn't, doesn't, well, doesn't want, doesn't, whatever they're able to discharge. And I'm sure there's, there's rules about that. Um, I don't think that the reservoir is used by any farmers though, because that's really Northampton's water, but it's there, it's in our town. And it's something that we kind of have to, I mean, they, they work hard to help us protect that. Great. Um, thank you so much for all of that. Um, I think that, so, you know, having shared some more specificity about the questions um, and a little bit of a sense of like how we got to this place and, and, and the work that we can do um, in collaboration um, with you all, um, I would love to get a sense of, you know, in terms of the document that we're providing you, because one of the you know the key deliverable, and in many ways, is this summary document and all of the research that goes into it. But um, if there, in your opinion, uh, are there aspects uh, and forms of information that would be most helpful to you in furthering um, you know the work of you know fostering a more climate resilient Waitley, and and so to kind of be more specific, like sometimes people are looking more for a this is everything that's going on. And we're going to try to take what's going on at the, the these broader patterns at the you know regional and national and global scale and translate them down into what's going on here. Um, but that's more of a pol like it's kind of a recommendation. Um, some people want to say, look, there's all these recommendations from all these state programs and all of the Franklin County Regional Planning District. There's all these recommendations floating out there. Can we evaluate what we're actually doing with those recommendations? Has any action happened on those? Some people say it would be really great if we had a better understanding of um, you know, who's using the aquifer and what the water draws are and some maps around, you know, um, you know, competing water uses. Um, those are just kind of top of mind things, but are, you know, in terms of making a document and a product that's really as, as useful and actionable for you all, um, do you guys have anything, um, um, whether, you know, kind of broad framework or more specific that you would be um, really useful? Um, and I'm happy to share, We the Conway School has done some uh, climate resilient plans for um, one just recently for uh, Plainfield. Um, so we could share that with you just as a sense of like, this is a, a precedent, like this is something that can happen, but would love to uh, just hear from you if you have any specific things you feel would be really helpful in terms of the way the information presenting or specific pieces of information in that report. I have some ideas about this, but... Um... If anybody else wants to hop in first, please, by all means. Why don't you go first, Tana? Okay. Um, as one of the people who prepares grant applications for the town, um, it's really helpful when planning documents are very specific about um, what they recommend. So have like more in-depth recommendations than just look into this data source that might be of use for the town in the future. Um, Hire a consultant to look at the follow. -up. Yeah, right. Exactly. I've seen that many times, and I think that um, yeah, there are places for that, and it's important to be able to point to a plan and say, "Look, we should be doing this." And also, um, it's also very helpful to be able to form more specific grant applications when um, our planning documents are really well focused in on what they're trying to the problem that they're trying to solve. So I think um, in terms of this plan, it would be more useful from my perspective to have something where you take one of the questions that we've provided maybe and really delve in deep with that instead of trying to just touch on each one of them lightly and give vague recommendations about them. But that's just coming from a grant writing perspective. Yeah, then our town really supports our grant writers. I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I can't tell you how important it's been. I, I I feel like one of the things you said that resonated with me was, boy, wouldn't it be good to have data on water draws so that when it comes to droughts and people say, well, why can't we get water here or there, uh, that we that we actually know what the what those water resources are, at least how they're being tapped right now. And again, any, any data um, that kind of informs the decisions you might have to make on any of these four areas would be really, really helpful. Like, I, I don't actually know how many uh, migrant farm workers we have in town, how many are housed. I know there are some like houses on some farms because some of them have been in the news. Um, 
uh, I don't even know the size of the problem uh, if that were, you know, if, if those houses were to go away. Um, and uh, that, that kind of thing. I think, I, so I think this is kind of in line with what Hannah was saying about having, um, if you get some specific data or that that is probably preferable to just a general kind of recommendation. I would agree with that. I'm, um, hmm. I just finished lunch and apparently I'm digesting and a lot of my blood <laughs> is in my belly right now. So <laughs> I'm trying to draw it back up to my brain. Um, I'm much more interested in very specific uh, actionable recommendations that we can actually do something with rather than a lot of broad information that will paralyze us uh, with its, you know, with its breadth where we just go, oh my God, that's a problem. Oh my God, that's a problem. Um, you know, even politically, I like to know what I can do about mm -hmm. something not that something's a problem and I can just sit there and feel frustrated with it. Um, so I'd almost say with the questions that we've came up, come up with, if there's anything that you, I mean, we came up with four things to look into. If there's anything that you start looking into and you start and you go, this is actually really a huge issue for Waitley, put a flag on it and let us know and say, we want to look into this further. What do you think? We think these other things can sit on the table for a little while, but this is going to cause you problems in the next three to five years. Does that make sense? Yeah, great. Um, Brian, any additional things you'd like to add to that? Um, a quick question I have um, that kind of is a, a related to that is that in initial in our initial proposal, um, we also had a, a piece on. Um, kind of what would potential development look like um, specifically in the area um, surrounding the um, Interstate 91 exit, um, Highway 5. Um, and they didn't come through in the questions, um, but as part oh. of the proposal. Um, so I was just curious, as an example, like that's a place where like specific things could be generated, um, but just wanting to know if that still feels like something that wants to be uh, um, a centerpiece of the work that we do, or is that kind of like, it would be better to look at more specific things across um, different scales and then go and say, and this is how that could be applied in this area. Um, just curious since it didn't really come through explicitly in the questions themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it okay if I jump in? Go ahead. Yeah. I really like the idea of having a specific area in town as a lens. Um, just to give you a heads up, we did just get a grant to do an economic development planning study for that area of town. Oh, so cool. we will have more information about that area and more recommendations about that area from other consultants as well. Um, not to say that your work wouldn't be valued and important for that, but I'm a little bit nervous about replication or okay. um, mm -hmm. it might be easier to do that kind of work after we finish. I don't know. I'm willing to defer to everyone else on the call as well, but um, that's just the first thing that's coming to my mind. That's really helpful. Thank you. And that's one of our biggest goals in this process is to like try to avoid redundancy and whenever possible and try to find that sweet spot of where we could be most meaningful to y'all. So that's helpful. totally. Um, I'm not sure if I'm echoing what Anna just said, uh, Hannah just said, or saying something different, but I'm more interested in a a broader um, a broader look at everything and then saying this might affect this area. That you're that you're working on developing, rather than focusing specifically on that. I wonder if there are other areas of town that might be a better lens for some of the work you're mm -hmm. doing. Like, how can your work be applicable to Chestnut Plain Road, which is our historic historic center of town, or West Waitley, which is still relatively rural and quite mountainous, um, or East Waitley, which is very agricultural. I think there are different lenses that you could take throughout Waitley. Sounds like maybe even like different zone, like kind of some zones, mm -hmm. like combination of like eco like ecological zones, but also land use. Um, and maybe absolutely, maybe absolutely. Have yeah. different yeah. strategies apply. Um, and mm. how the how the same themes maybe manifest themselves differently in different in different areas of 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 the town. I think totally. 
but pretty yeah. nicely, Tyson. Yeah. yeah. Um, great. Um, I'm, a little not I'm noticing the time, I'm a little bit behind. So I just want to wrap this section up. And if there's any last minute things that people want to add to that, we can obviously, if you have a great idea, um, feel free to share that later. But um, does it feel good to move on for right now? Yep. Cool. Great. So um, the next thing we want to do is just take a look at our um, the stakeholders list that we have um, that was part of the document. And you know, many of you guys are represented here. Um, but um, to also get a sense of, B, would you mind putting that up on the screen? Um, it's always really great to know, like, who should we talk to? Like, who's not on the list that we should really talk to? Um, and even when you were mentioning things about, like, water use, I was like, is there someone in town who uh, is either part of the town government or not, who's, like, really knowledgeable about um, what draws from what aquifer? Um, but um, I think B is going to um, pop up the list of folks that we have. Um, and it would just be really great if you guys just take a moment to look that over um, and then just free to popcorn out any other folks that we should know about um, because, I mean, you guys are here. So um, we also have um, listed um, Scott Jackson, who's on the Conservation Commission yeah. uh, as part of the um, like broader community engagement folks. Uh, mm -hmm. And, but yeah, is there anybody, um, anybody who you're like, this person knows Waitley really well, or they represent kind of a certain um, like demographic or, uh, you know, constituency in town that would be really good to talk to? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can think of a few off the top of my head. If you're going to yeah. look into water, I would contact Wayne Hutkowski, and I can spell his last name for you. Um, his email is water at waitley.org. Sounds like the right person to be talking to. Yeah. <laughs> He's the water commissioner, or um, sorry, yeah. the water superintendent. Superintendent, yeah. great. Um, I'm yeah. also going to put in the chat a bunch of stakeholders that we identified in our last meeting. These are organizations. We don't have, well, we have some specific contacts for them, um, but these are the organizations that we identified at our last meeting. That's great, thank you. And that kind of leads to a broader question, like, yeah, are there other folks who are on the list that like know about the work and are invested in the work that y'all are doing? Like, you know, we have like CISA down um, and we have the Grange down as a potential organization, mm -hmm. but are there other kind of other organizations or individuals that are like, oh, we, we've heard that, you know, Hannah told me that there's a really cool project going on and I'm kind of curious, I'm not on the board, but um, mm -hmm. any folks like that would be great too. Yeah, um, the first one that comes to mind for me is the Hitchcock Center over in Amherst. Um, they do a lot of environmental education. They may not be as directly related to this project, but um, they're not a bad contact to have. Um, and I can give you a name for somebody to reach out to there too. I wonder too about Smith College because they have the environmental classroom and um, you know the environmental forest project field station. Farm yeah. project. Yeah. yeah yeah I think that would be great um, top of Poplar Hill yeah Paul Wetzel would be a good person to contact yeah. there I'll see if I can find his information okay awesome um and then are there folks who like you know aren't aware or are you know maybe have been like left out of not intentionally but you know who just may not be engaged in the in the work um, that would be also good to reach out to. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to get folks, everybody on board on the same project, but if there are other constituencies or groups of folks that, you know, maybe don't know about the, the work of the community and, and where this is going, if there's good context there too, that would be really great. I'm wondering about a representative or two or three from the uh, migrant farm worker community. We, you know, if there's somebody who's interested and feels that they have time, um, that would be a good perspective to have. And it, it might be, um, Norse Farms might be a place to ask about um, looping somebody over there in uh, when, they're, when they're in this area and when they have time, if they do. The Pioneer Valley Workers Center might also have contacts. I don't know if they'll have contacts with folks who are specifically working on farms in Waitley, but I think they do migrant farm worker advocacy. Yep. Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of connected to that is um, 
are there um are there existing you know a lot of the, part of the work that we're going to be doing obviously is going to be a lot uh, we'll be we'll talk about this in a moment but like community engagement like some actual you know in person or and or virtual um, meetings where we try to gather um, community um, feedback and ideas specifically about the work just to further um, both to make the community aware of what's going on and the work that we're doing but also to try to gather as much meaningful input so again we can provide the most meaningful um, research and, and work to you all um, so kind of with that are there any existing kind of community dynamics around this project or similar work um, that we should know about before we start thinking about developing community engagement um, and also start reaching out to um, both folks who already know about the project and maybe folks who don't know about the project. Um, I know that could be, you know, I come, I, I live and work in a small town in rural, in rural Massachusetts, so I know that like that can be kind of like a hot button issue, but um, just, just want to get a sense of like, you know, oh, this person never talks to this person, so don't have them in the same room together. Or <laughs> last time we had a climate resilient meeting, somebody came in because there's, you know, like storm, you know, like just stuff like that. Any kind of broader things that we can be aware of, just so we can make sure to be sensitive to them in our work going forward. Minimize the number of times we put our foot in our mouth as well is also nice. Oh. Hmm. And if you don't feel, if also oh, we, we, we don't really come to fisticuffs very often here. Um, um, it, the thing that occurred to me while you were speaking was that there's probably lots of boards for which this is like a somewhat related issue, like mm. the Ag Commission, the Energy Committee, the uh, Conservation Committee, you've already got Scott Jackson's name down there. So when it would come time to do like the outreach to the public, I would certainly start with those. We do have a town newsletter. And maybe oh. understanding the timing on that, it really it only comes out four times a year. There'll be an issue coming out in early March is the next one. Okay. Um, and that's a way to get something into every person's mailbox. Um, and to you know to invite people to to come to something like that. That's mm -hmm. um, and there's certainly people use websites, but a lot of people really just they they want their paper. The, the scoop is what the name of the, the newsletter is. They want their scoop in their mailbox on paper. I'm uh, obsessed with that name. So for, <laughs> uh, it's an ice cream scoop. So anyway, but uh, uh, it um, that's something that if there's going to be um, something, if we can get uh, notice of it, get dates on people's calendars uh, with uh, something in the scoop for early March, that might be a good target because I think you might, we might have something by then, right? Or at least some dates. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to this in a little bit. But yeah, we'll, for us, for our timeline, our first one is by February 5th, and our second one is by March 5th. So probably won't line up with the timing of the scoop, but um, good to know that as a community resource oh. to uh, engage yeah. folks with. Um, I, I have, to have a Sorry. I wanted to pop in, sorry. Yeah. Uh, when I was campaigning to be on select board, I did some door knocking. And I I think what I would suggest about different constituencies is that there, there are definitely folks who feel like the environmental stuff is like, it's preventing me from building X, Y, and Z in my backyard when I really want to. And so to um, to approach anything that's community-wide with a sense of diplomacy and education and bringing people in uh, because some folks are going to feel kind of threatened or um, cranky. That's really great. Thank you for that uh, specific insight. Yeah. Um, so sometimes, I mean, I, if it feels like sometimes it feels more meaningful to you as opposed to saying, how do you think climate change affects your X, Y, Z? Sometimes it's like, how do you feel, like, have you noticed and experienced uh, increased drought conditions? And what has that meant to you? Um, right. Um, as opposed to trying to straight focus specifically on the um, specifics as opposed to the maybe sometimes the politicized term. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, in terms of community engagement, we will have those two, we'll be restructuring and running those two sessions that we mentioned. Um, so with that, it would be great for us to get a sense from you guys if um, there, I'm assuming that there's a little bit of a formatted structure because we'll be um, part of um, public meeting law because it will be a town meeting, right? So some formality that goes into that, but um, kind of additionally to that, are there any structures for the community engagement 
um, sessions and public meetings that you guys have had um, in Waitley that you feel things that work well or things that don't work well um, in those community engagement type of meetings? Um, I can hop in again on this. I think with community engagement, um, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get people engaged with municipal actions. Um, I find that if you include hybrid opportunities for engagement, people get really excited and cool. often folks who wouldn't usually be able to tune in either out of transportation or um, time limitations suddenly can. Um, and it leads for an opportunity or it makes for an opportunity for people to provide input where they wouldn't have had the opportunity otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think I would try to include at least a remote component in any of the engagement you do. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. My concern about engagement is usually that um, people don't notice that they have an opportunity to engage, like they'll skim over something in the scoop or there will be something on the website. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we could certainly do things like put notices at the library, but I also wonder about sending a representative like to the dump, which was... Mm -hmm great place to engage with folks again when I was campaigning <laughs> you just hang out at the dump and you give them yeah. a flyer and you chat with them and it's awesome it's yeah. awesome so I'd use that awesome, as yeah. an engagement technique yeah. to dump I was at the dump today had a great convo <laughs> yeah, yeah it's cool yeah um that's one really other, yeah one other thing I noticed that worked well at um certain kinds I don't know if it would apply to this but sometimes when you have um when you have something that's a very visual like when we were putting in new sidewalks in the center of town um one of the outreach events was hey we're going to have all the pictures and the plans up on boards everybody gets sticky mm. notes you can put your comments there there'll be people there to answer questions and it wasn't so much we give you this presentation and that worked really well because it was, it was a very visual, you know, a map oriented kind of thing. And we got, um, we got comments from people that actually made us make some adjustments to like where various parking or sidewalks were going to go uh, that were easy to accommodate. And that was very nice. Um, uh, I don't, so depending on what you have, if there were a, um, like a poster or a slideshow that, um, that can be uh, the thing, you know, things that people could comment on themselves. Mm -hmm. I know that's that has worked well for some things in the past. Great. Might depend on how many maps are in your uh, <laughs> are in your presentation. Awesome. I wonder too if it would be helpful to do for your first community engagement session a more focused focus group of more engaged citizens. We have some people who are definitely way more into participating in municipal government than others are. Um, or specific representatives from community groups um, who might be easier to get a hold of. And then the second engagement session, you have more time to publicize it um, and get the word out for a broader community to engage with it. Mm. Good idea. That's a good point. Yeah, that's great. That's a really helpful um, uh, perspective. Um, what this is a kind of a broad question, but in, in your experience, Hannah, I guess all of you in terms of um, I mean, outside of things like town meeting, which is a, its own beast, um, when you guys run, um, you know, town level uh, kind of community meetings um, and, in, you know, about specific issues, what is the turnout like? Um, or is it sometimes, is it one of the things like sometimes it's three people and sometimes it's 37 people. Um, sometimes it's, it's always the same three people, um, you know, like what, just to get a sense of the, of the context a little bit. Um, it can help us start to plan and kind of think about how to structure things. Um, and also, if it's always the same three people, how to like more actively go after the people who aren't those three people. Um, yeah, I think um, it might be kind of hard to get engagement without doing a lot of advertising first. I'm thinking about the floodplain bylaw work that we did a little less than a year ago. We did a lot of publicizing for that, and we had really good turnout when we had an information session for that. Um, but we started our uh, publicizing campaign, I'd say, maybe a month beforehand um, and used as many avenues as we possibly could to get people's attention. 
I think for regular committee meetings, there's rarely additional participants unless they have really strong opinions that they want to voice at the committee meeting. <laughs> yeah, or unless they have business. Or business, yeah. Committee as well, yeah, that's. Yeah. And when you, like, when you say we had really good turnout, like, what does really good turnout look like? Like, how many people or? I would say that was relatively sizable. So we had it, um, I believe it was at least over Zoom, if not hybrid. And we had, I'd say, 30 to 40 participants at the information session. Does that sound right? Was anybody else here there? Yeah, I was there, but I, I don't remember. I feel like I was there on Zoom. Yeah, um, me too. And and I, yeah, and I, I don't remember if there was an in-person component. I don't remember either, but um, I think we had around at least 30 people there. And afterwards, actually for months afterwards, we would have folks coming in asking questions about the bylaws, which I thought was great. Right. Yeah, and I think because that was something that, uh, didn't we have to vote on it at town meeting as well? Yeah. yeah. So I think often something that's gonna get voted on at a town meeting will get a certain section of town yeah. interested. There's, so there's people who just want to be informed in advance about what they might have to vote on. Um, if they, This won't necessarily have a town meeting vote right. like this town meeting <laughs> on it. Um, so it, it uh, yeah. But I think, I think Ken is right. Yeah, you know, getting the word out and uh, and then, you know, people are busy, so that's hard. But I, I do agree about the hybrid is a good a good place to make it more accessible. Great. Hannah, uh, when you say, like, maybe do a focus group for a first meeting, do you have people in mind when you say that? Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, okay. I'll put it, let's see. What would be the easiest way for me to get that information to you? Because I'm thinking of, like, between three and five people who I think would be good places to start. Amazing. You can email or drop it in the chat and I'll put it in our document. Cool. Um, I'm going to put the names in the chat and then Joyce, Julie, Brian, Becky, if you see anybody or if I didn't think uh, of anybody, let me know. Thank you. This is also a somewhat cynical point of view, but in my brief so far tenure on the board, um, the time that I've seen most people show up was for the tax classification and it was because they were mad. Oh, yeah. You know, they felt that they were being threatened in some way. And, uh, you know, if people think that what is happening is going to directly affect their livelihood or change their life in some significant way, they will show up. Right. But it doesn't necessarily mean here we want to scare people. Yeah, I know. I was like, well, we could start a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me being cynical for a moment. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Um, the yeah, rumor could know. be that there's going to be dessert. <laughs> oh, I like That's true. That. Snacks. Yeah. People or talk, love snacks. Yeah. Or talk about how climate change might affect people's internet access. That could also get people. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> great. Um, thank you for that. And um, as we continue to, to plan those, we'll definitely be reaching out for maybe some more specific information. Is there anything else that, Smo or B, you want to um, get on that right now? Or maybe one question I have is, are there um, are there days that typically, I mean, in addition to working well for you all, maybe we can send out um, a survey later, um, but days, whether in the town meeting calendar that tend to be good for, like a day that like there's not a billion other community or uh, um, commission meetings going on or um, that, that, that you all have found that you try to schedule events on? I can look at the town calendar too, but I was just like, some people are like, yeah, we always do that stuff on Mondays because there's community meetings every other day. Or, um, yeah, mm. I found that Thursdays typically don't tend to have a lot of things. The ZBA meetings are on the first Thursday every month, but I think besides that, there's nothing else regular on Thursdays, although that's tending towards the end of the week and people might be tired by then. Yeah. Um, we don't have a we, lot on Mondays either. Mondays and yeah. Wednesdays. Tuesdays are, are at least certainly in the budget season are really full. I would avoid Tuesdays. Yeah. yeah. Are we looking at daytimes or evenings or both? Um, I think if you're trying to get more people, I would go for evenings. Yeah. Okay. We're flexible looking for yeah, maximum engagement, essentially. Say Tuesdays and Wednesdays are not good. <laughs> yeah. 
Friday is also typically not good in my experience yeah. with sound stuff, but so it's not, I'm, what I'm hearing is Mondays and Thursdays seem to be the most fertile ground for. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, awesome. Um, so uh, we have, I have a few specific questions and then kind of some more next step stuff and I'm doing my best. I think we're gonna wrap us up here in time. So thanks for everyone's patience here. Um, this is this kind of out of left field. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be doing is um, mapping based. So mm -hmm. curious, one of the kind of questions on the proposal was identifying like gaps in data um, at the townwide level. Um, and I don't know if that's happened yet. Uh, either way is fine, but it'd be great. Is there someone who, is there any like, is there a person who is the like, has the town GIS data or is the point person for that type of information um, in town? I would talk to FERCOG. They're outside of the town. Do you know what FERCOG is? Uh, the, uh, no. It's the Franklin oh, yes. Regional Council of yes. Governments. Yes. Yeah. Um, they have a specific GIS department and they do a lot of the work that we need. Great. I figured there wasn't a specific person in town, but just okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. That is very useful. Um, this is kind of a fun one for us. We would love to. Uh, get a tour of the town. We're doing our own reconnaissance, as it were. But um, I don't know if there's any no 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 um, pressure. But if there's anyone who'd be excited about um, showing us around and giving us some of the the highlights or the this is what we think is most vulnerable to climate change, and we like to look at this area. Um, you don't have to shout out now, but um, if there's anybody who'd be interested in doing that, it'd be great. Um, we're flexible. We can work around people's schedules. Or even in lieu of like a physical tour, sending us spots like go check out yes. this place. You gotta go to the Waitley Diner. You gotta go look at this part of the river or whatever. I've got um, a couple neighbors who grew up in the area and would probably happily say, "Oh, you go should go check out this and that and this other thing." They might, they may or may not actually take you, but they would be happy yeah. to suggest things. Right. Amazing. Well, with with water being such an issue um, and water watershed conditions i i think our water superintendent is you know he's lived here all his life cool. he we you know, grew up on a farm uh, he knows a lot about where the water flows on the surface and below um i think that you know when you when you talk to him make sure you get a tour of mm -hmm. our water system and he'll be able to also tell you about its vulnerabilities i think mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's one thing. If there's uh, one of these farmers, either Norris or Shimuka, that could um, give you a tour, or CISA, I mean, they they can really they're really in tune to what farmers need. Um, those are the two that came to mind for me. And the UMass uh, the the UMass farm, which is right across the border in Deerfield, yep, it's probably already on your list. I've done lots of work with them over the past and have lots of relationships yeah. so yeah awesome thank you um oh, so our you're... town administrator is really awesome too he <laughs> knows all kinds of stuff <laughs> that's true yeah. um thank you for that um so kind of just kind of recapping some next or going over some next steps for us um so we're gonna take this and uh, information in the next couple of things we cover and craft uh, the memorandum of understanding for the project um, and get that to you guys, have a chance to look over, make sure that we're all on the same page um, about what the scope of our work is, what the timeline of our work is, um, what the deliverables of our work are. Um, so that's something that you'll be seeing from us soon. And that's a starting point document, right? It's something that we use as a foundation. Obviously, sometimes priorities shift a little bit as the process goes on, but really as that baseline uh, memorandum of understanding. Um, and then um, we did talk about we'll be having one community meeting before February 5th and one by March 5th. We've had some useful information here that we'll, I think, take back and start to think about more specific dates and what that looks like and more specific stakeholder lists. So um, that's really um, useful. Um, it would be great to set up um, some regular check-in meetings, um, either with the um, Climate Resilience Committee and or with you, Brian, um, just to try to figure out a way that we could create um, a regular time to connect to make sure that 
um, as things come up or shift or as things come up and we have more questions or you have more questions for us that we can um, do that. So I don't know if if right now does your committee have a standing meeting time or is I know that's something that just kind of is is new right um, around this project, but um, is there a regular meeting time that you guys have? No. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, the committee needs 48 hours advance notice to meet. Um, sure. And usually we do some outreach, what, like a week or two beforehand if we need to meet. Um, I think I would have been your staff contact. I would reach out to Brian in the meantime um, until we get a new community development administrator. Cool. Great. Um, sounds good. Um, so we'll, great. We'll, we'll, Brian, we'll check in with you um, and we can structure those just as a way you know, for us to to make sure that we're kind of on the same page as we go throughout the process and that there's an opportunity for, kind of like for consistent feedback and guidance and questions. And um, so that's great. Um, communications going forward, that's part of it, but in terms of just kind of general every day, um, are there, what are the best ways to get in contact with you guys? And what are the ways that are least desired? Like, um, you know, some people are like, I look, love looking at my emails. And some people are like, I don't look at my emails until like, you know, it says the house is on fire. So um, yeah, are there are good ways to, um, what are the best ways uh, to contact folks mm -hmm. specifically around this work of this committee and our project? Email works for me really well. well. Me too. Right. Brian, that feels good to you too. Um, great, awesome, thank you. Um, and we have the we have a shared email, which is the Waitley um, underscore Conway twenty three at CSLD, which is the one that you guys have had. So just know that when you guys email to that, um, which we'll always have as a CC on our emails, that it will go to all three of us, so we're all on the same page. Um, and if you, um, yeah, um, and let me see. Other things that we want to make sure to cover, B and small, right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we want to set those dates for those meetings? I wonder if we want to do that. If yeah. do, do folks have five minutes to just do that, get those on the calendar? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, February 5th is going to be here before you know it. Yeah. Um, Um, let me open up my calendar. And we're, thought, we're thinking Monday or Thursdays. Um, so, um, you know, it would be, I mean, the, the most time would be the 30th, Monday the 30th or Thursday the 2nd. That would give us the most amount of time, which is still, you know, mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, um, either one is great. Yeah, um, I've got a meeting. I think it's going to be five to six that night. So, but you weren't thinking of going earlier than that. So that's still okay. And Thursday's open certainly for me. Uh, I don't know what our other stakeholders will be like, but I. Okay. Well, um, maybe what we can do is we can do some of that state. Uh, stakeholder um, research and get that list together and maybe we can um, introduce ourselves and put out a survey. Does that feel it's, like? Yeah. Hmm. I could live with either of those dates for the meeting and I assume it would be something like seven o'clock or certain and probably not earlier than six. Right. Yeah. Great. Sounds good. So either Monday, January 30th or Thursday the 2nd. 7 p.m. ish, and we can commit to firming that data by middle of next week. I would say is probably good. Sounds good. Okay. Seems reasonable. Um, All right. Do you want to do the second one too, or should we? Um, second one. March 5th. We could do the second one at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Great. Um, we can, yeah, we can start. Go ahead, B. I was just going to say, so should we figure out when the like, next time we will meet, minus Hannah, tragically? <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be great for, for us to either connect kind of right, at least 
right on either side of that first at the at the very least on either side of that community meeting so either to be like hey what are the things we want to make sure we go over or hey how did that go um a little um review um mm. are there and i know that i want to be respectful of people's times because i know busy folks and already on committees and select boards so i don't want to blow up people's meeting situation um would do people feel like it's more productive in terms of that to meet uh, before the next community, like before the, like the first community engagement meeting, or um, kind of immediately after as a follow up? I'm seeing a nod as before sounds good. But you're, oh, you're Julie, you're on mute. I was thinking before so that we could, you know, all be on the same page. I love that. I am for that as well. So um, do we want to put something in? Um, for the week of the 23rd, which is not mm -hmm. next week, but the week after, does yeah. that feel? Monday or that Thursday feels good. would work fine. Monday or Thursday, we... Um, and if it's during the day, I can actually do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, much during the day, because but classes start for me on the 26th. So if it's that Thursday, it has to be in the evening. Okay. Um, Ditto I, for me during the day, except for Wednesday afternoon. But otherwise, I could do during the day. Okay. Yeah. But it's probably hard for Becky. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't object to uh, uh, evening meeting either on the 23rd or the 26th either. I think we have um, an event 26th in the evening. So can we do 23rd in the evening? Sure. Okay. And for evening, does evening start at six for you or does it start at seven? <laughs> That's what she said. Um, we are flexible um, uh -huh. in terms of what works best for you all. If people have strong feelings one way or the other, we can accommodate. Oh. Uh. Um, I don't have a strong feeling. I don't know the really, other. Yeah. I've, I've had meetings at both. I mean, it's mostly a strategy for do you try and get supper before or do you try and finish exactly. the meeting on time and have supper after? That's <laughs> yeah. and um, and I can manage either one. Okay. Um, do you think we would get more like Becky and um, and Eli with uh, a seven at seven p.m. Or a 6 p.m. Or sorry, 6 or maybe 6 30, just to be weird, but split the difference a little bit. Oh, <laughs> get crazy. Oh, what a great uh, idea. <laughs> I like 6 30. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay. All right. 6 30 on the Monday, January 23rd. And are you typically going to try to hold them to an hour and a half? I think, yes, I think this is, yes, I'd say probably, an, I think we could do an hour um, okay. yeah. less. I think that this is, this being the first meeting, this one, yeah, this is um, awesome. kind of the broadest scope. Um, cool. And great, that's awesome. Um, and I think, um, Smell or B, do you have anything else for the whole group that you um, want to ask or um, put out there? No, just want to thank you for your time and all the like the pre work that you did for this and um, for for partnering with us. It's, it feels like such a cool opportunity to get to work with you. Also, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Great. Yeah, we're super excited. And if anything, too, if you like, you know, some folks, you know, if you have an idea, they're like, oh, I wish I would have said that in the meeting. Feel free to email us at any time, and add that that door is always open. The more the more information and points of points of information and ideas and contacts we have, um, the better we're able to, to pursue the questions that you guys. So never feel like anything's too big or small. Um, and don't be like, you know, oh, they probably already know about this, so I won't mention it. Like it always is worth like, great, you know, hopefully we do, but if in case we don't, it's nice to have that, uh, that reference. Um, and we're just really grateful for this opportunity. Um, and uh, Hannah and Brian, would it be possible for you guys to stay on the line for a minute just to make sure that as that transition happens, we make sure that we have everything covered from our end? Um, does that work for you guys? Yeah, I'm happy to stay on. Also, um, do we have enough people on the call to vote to approve the minutes or do we need to wait until next time? Oh, 
How many of us are on the committee? There's there are four people on the committee, but also it's not an appointed committee. So I don't know if we need an official vote. Brian, do you know what we need for this? We could just also vote to approve the minutes until next or next time. I don't think we have to approve the minutes from the last meeting this time. I don't remember who was official committee members. I think you probably have four, right? We have four. Yeah. So I, if you can vote and if it's. Okay. So yeah, just a, a, a 50% is enough. Great. Okay. I move that we approve the meeting minutes that Hannah emailed us today. I second that. Okay. I don't know who's running this meeting, but I'm used to running meetings. So <laughs> all those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. That's the only vote we had to do today. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right, great. Okay. Take care, everybody. And thank you so much. Thank you so Good much. First meeting. Bye. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Okay. Um, and then should we, so what can I do to help make this transition easiest for you guys? Um, well, you guys, you probably have like 30 more minutes. So, um, just adding to this conversation would be great. Um, so it's essentially like, want to make sure that, um, that nothing gets lost in the shuffle. So really making sure and, and having a chance to meet and connect with you, Brian, um, and, uh, getting a sense of what your availability is. But, um, I think one of the things that we wanted to go over quickly was kind of the, the timeline. I don't know if, Brian, if Hannah, if you, if you shared that with um, Brian, like the project timeline and uh, some of the milestones that you talked about with CJ. Um, I think if you could send it again, that would be awesome. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you. So we can go over some of that um, in more in depth, and that will also be in our memorandum of understanding, um, but essentially just lays out um, kind of when you can, we talked about a little bit today, like community meetings will be by this day and this day. Um, and um, you know, you'll, we'll be having, like, this is when you'll get a draft of the final report and expect to get, um, the, uh, final copy of the final report. It just kind of lays out the, the, the flow of the work. Um, and then, um, if there's, um, I don't know if, if there's Brian, if there's a time when like, if we want to set up like a regu regular regular check-in, maybe it's enough to do it with the whole climate committee. But if we want to set in like a just a, a brief opportunity to to check in if there's stuff that comes up um, on the weekly basis, um, to be able to touch base and connect. Or I also want to be respectful of your schedule. I know that kind of ministry have a lot going on. Uh, but if there's a way that we could just to make sure that you know we're we're doing the work that feels most meaningful to the town of Waitley um, and as someone with their finger on the pulse. Um, that might be helpful. Um, I don't know what feels good to you. Um, uh, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Um, really, uh, or you can really just reach out at, at any time. Mm -hmm. Um, by email is probably the best way. Okay. Um, I, I'm fairly responsive. I mean, quite honestly, this this time of year is going to, is a busy time of year because it's when we start developing our budgets and yeah I start meeting with the personnel committee and the capital improvement committee and, and there's a lot going on sure. um so and obviously it's unknown when we'll get our new Hannah um <laughs> in terms of hiring and stuff like that so um yeah we'll have to sort of sort of uh just keep pushing forward as to how that happens um but I'm 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 really available by email um, Monday through Thursday, of course. Um, I try not to do much over the weekends, but. Um, so it sounds to me like what I'm hearing that like that's kind of the preference for you is just for us as stuff as opposed to saying like we're going to check in every Monday at 3.30 to just have, um, you know, if we have a question to put that together in an email to you and communicate that way, is that? Yeah, I think that's, that's the best way to go. Okay. Because uh, my days are uh unpredictable sometimes so yeah yeah <laughs> that's great yeah for some people they're like i want to know that i only have to think about this thing at this time every week and sometimes people are like you know just shoot me a question when you have it so that's really that's useful to know for us um awesome um anything else that smo or 
be that you have in terms of um, kind of transition or things you want to take the opportunity to ask Hannah or Brian while we have them on the line right now? I think that's all great. I mean, Hannah, if there's anything that you want, it seems like you put a lot of energy into kind of thinking through this with CJ. And so if there's any other kind of stuff that you want, just like for us to know, either brain dump verbally here or through writing or whatever. Um, yeah, totally. I think that's just the very open-ended question. And yeah, Brian, if you need to to be off, I, don't, I yeah, want to be mindful of both of your times. Yeah. Um... There isn't anything off the top of my head that we haven't touched on in this meeting or the last meeting. I'll send you the minutes now that they're approved. Um, and I'll send you the recording of this meeting. And actually, I can send you the recording of the last meeting as well, if you'd like that. That'd be um, great. Yeah. Uh, let me write that down. Meetings, plural. OK. Um, yeah, I think you guys will be fine. The committee is really devoted. They're easy to get a hold of and they're very knowledgeable. Um, I think you've got a really good team to work with. So I'm not worried. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Brian, uh, Brian, for you to know, you'll be getting a draft of the memorandum of understanding from us. Um, that will be like the next thing you see from us, probably. Um, so just a heads up on that since you are now the new, you know. Um, person. This, this, yes. Um, so um, great. Well, do you have any other questions for us or anything else you need from us right now um, in the process? I don't think so. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I know an hour and a half meeting on a Thursday afternoon is a big chunk of time, so I really appreciate it. Um, and um, we're really looking forward to, to working together. And Hannah, congratulations on next things. Thank you. Yeah. And good luck. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this from afar because it seems like such a cool project. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Where are you headed? Are you staying local or is this a big shift? Kind of. I'm going to be working remotely for the city of Somerville. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Congratulations. So all right. Well, take care, everyone. It was so great to meet you all. Um, yeah. And send some questions when you have them. Great. Awesome. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Bye.